Yeah. Hi. Thank you for inviting me on this interview to help other aspirants. Uh, a little bit about myself first. My name is Karan Doshi. Currently, I'm uh, working in KPMG in uh, UK. I'm working as a data analyst here. Uh, my educational background, I did my bachelor's in uh, B.Tech in mechanical engineering and passed out in 2015 from uh, BMS IT, which is in Bangalore, India. And I, after that, I worked for a couple of years in two companies uh, in the analytics domain. And then after doing that, I decided, yeah, I'm comfortable in the analytics domain. So I would want to pursue my master's in analytics i was looking for opportunities outside india where i could apply for colleges which would uh, help me get my masters and fortunately i uh, narrowed it down to imperial college london in uk where i did my masters in business analytics it was a one year course i started in august 2018 and graduated in september 2019 and then in october 2019 i joined kpmg as a full time employee uh, in the forensic uh, division and yeah it's been about 5 6 months working here in kpmg and it's been quite an interesting and um, uh, i have got to learn a lot uh, uh, when i compare about what how the work culture is back in india when i worked for a couple of years and the work culture here yeah uh, so uh, to be honest like i did not focus much on these exams because the colleges where i i i the imperial college where i decided to apply did not have a uh, mandatory requirement for a gre uh, but they had a requirement for toefl so in gre i scored 311 and in toefl i scored 107 but for my admissions in imperial college there was only the requirement of toefl exam to show that we have good english speaking capability uh, i am as far as i know it's not changed for this year also but uh, they might probably change it in the coming years and probably add in another uh, competitive exam as a requirement for example say gre or the gmat so when i i did the course last year the fees was 27500 uh, pounds for the whole tuition fee for the whole year and uh, accommodation there there are a lot of options uh, one is either you stay with your relatives second one is you stay in the accommodation which is provided by the college uh, maintained managed by the college and third is you try to get a shared accommodation or try to find uh, apartments by yourself so all these three have different costs i was staying with my relatives fortunately so uh, i did not have uh, have to pay a lot of rent or anything but the student accommodation which is provided by the college uh, it's called a grad pad where you are uh, sharing your uh, you're, you're basically sharing an apartment where you have your own room uh, but you have a common area common kitchen with other students from imperial itself and the fees for that was around 800 uh, pounds a month and um, if you there were other people who were staying um, on their own um, finding who have found apartments with other people probably who are working out from college students from other colleges and their rent used to be anywhere around um, i would say uh, approximately 500 pounds uh, to 800 pounds a month depending on uh, what which area they decided to live in and with how many people they were sharing and what was the cost of of that particular locality so i would not be the right person to be able to give you the accurate figure since i didn't uh, use any of these facilities but yeah this is the approximate uh, figures of what um i got to know from my other friends in the course and apart from that you have your travel expenses where i used the london tube um, the subway the train to travel to the college and there are uh, monthly student passes um, sorry yearly student passes and monthly student passes which have a 30% discount so mostly all the students try to make use of that and that would be your additional cost apart from your mobile bills and wifi and your uh, daily personal expenses so all in all i would say probably you can assume uh, if you're having being on the conservative side around a uh, 1000 pounds a month uh, another 1000 pounds a month apart from the tuition fees would be your uh, expenses for your rent your stay your mobile bills wifi etc etc
so intern getting an internship uh, and getting a job there isn't a lot of difference here because both follow the same procedure you apply to the uh, you apply online on the website of the company you are interested in they they see your profile they see your profile and then they go through the interviews uh, interview or whatever process they have in mind probably a technical test sometimes and then an interview uh, for me personally if you ask me right now with the corona situation yes i have heard that the students who are in the current batch who are graduating are finding it difficult uh, to get internships or jobs because of the corona the situation the companies have um, freezed their hiring right now due to the uncertainty but when i did my uh, batch last when i did my course last year uh, it was not that difficult doing an internship because uh, there are a lot of paid and unpaid internships and unpaid internships were available so if you are open to like working uh, without uh, any salary or any stipend but just to increase your knowledge and to gain more experience in the analytics field um, there are a lot of opportunities so it's all about keeping your um, eyes and ears open and seeing that which companies are hiring which are not and the visa issue is really not a concern in internship because uh, on your student visa you have the opportunity you are allowed to do a internship anyways first first like uh, to to talk about the college it uh, it is really a good college quite well maintained infrastructure structure one of the best colleges in uh, london so i was really impressed by that and uh, the cohort was very diverse i think we had people from around uh, 34 to 35 countries uh, mixed up we are around 80 people so i go, i got um, got to know uh, people from a lot of diverse backgrounds from different countries and Uh, different uh, educational backgrounds also there were people from engineering there were people from commerce there were people from humanities also uh, who had uh, taken up these courses uh, and yeah it was quite a diverse background P- people from the age of 21 up to the age of 33 were a part of this course so uh, it was quite interesting to know and it was a different experience for me um, coming to the course uh, considering i did my bachelor's and my schooling in india this was comp- completely a different experience mm-hmm. the format was that the lecturer comes in and you have a few slides and presentations where the lecturer goes through the those slides and explains you the concepts and then you have weekly assignments uh, which are quite hands on and uh, not theoretical so you really need to work on understand the concepts and work on um, work on like your computers or the particular software or platform which is to be used in the course and then give do the assignment so it was uh, a good experience to get hands on exp- uh, to get hands on uh, training and apply what was learnt in the lecture slides to this particular assignment and since it was every week it, you are always kept on your toes and you don't have time to sit back and relax because uh, you have two or three course subjects going on simultaneously and every subject would have a weekly assignment or sometimes a biweekly assignment so that was different from india considering that in india you usually had projects or um, just a mid term exam or a final exam uh, so you you have to just prepare just before those but here it was different your assignments are also graded and uh, are a uh, 50 and a 50% weightage is given to them to your final score along with your final exams so you give equal importance to your final exams and to these assignments so i think that was a different factor and initially i took time to get used to it considering that uh, firstly i had a different educational experience in india and then i had worked for uh, almost more than 2 years and getting back into the educational domain was a little difficult but after a couple of months i picked up i got through the i got used to the environment and i was able to uh, <laughs> complete the course successfully <laughs> fortunately <laughs> Hmm. Uh, good question. So when I was doing my engineering in my final year, probably uh, that is the fourth fourth year or the eighth semester, um, I realized that um, uh, I wasn't that passionate about engineering, and I didn't see myself having a career in engineering, mechanical engineering. And I was trying to look for different uh, other domains, which you know it might interest me. And at that time, one of these companies, one of the analytical companies, came uh, to our college for. Uh, 
recruitment and then i was quite impressed by that and, I, and then i decided like probably analytics is something new and i am quite interested in and i should probably start my career there and that's when i joined my first job at aig analytics um and as a uh, modeling analyst and i worked there for a couple of years and then i again went, decided to join another company which was kind of a boutique consultancy but it was into marketing analytics and there i got introduced to the actual concepts of analytics i started working on programming in python r and using sql and other tools which were used which i used in analytics and i worked there for a year and i decided uh, yeah this is what i'm comfortable in i am interested in the analytics domain i like solving these problems problems using these tools and technologies uh, it didn't involve a lot of coding but uh, a little bit of coding uh, so that you are able to do analytics on python and r and that's how i decided that yeah if i want to progress further in the analytics domain since i have a engineering background probably getting a masters degree in analytics would help me uh, progress to the in the right direction and to make a better career in the analytics domain itself and that is why i decided that yeah masters in business analytics is what i'm going to do after you know working in the analytics domain for more than 2 years so i would say that this work experience before my masters was a turning point and a enlightening experience that yeah it gave me a very good um, i would say definitive answer that yeah i am comfortable in and this is what i would want to like doing in the future oh uh, so uh, to be honest i had uh, not decided i would be doing a masters outside india uh, my plan was the typical uh, which i had kick, had seen uh, in my uh, uh, teenage years do an uh, do a bachelor's in engineering and try to go for an mba from a reputed institution so going abroad never came to my mind but then when i decided of to do analytics uh, i saw that um, there were uh, colleges who, which were doing this course from a long time compared to a few colleges in india and i thought due to the reputation of these colleges i should probably start looking uh, abroad and the first um, the first challenge was which country uh, whether it's us or the uk or canada even ireland have, had uh, come up during the discussion when i was uh, speaking to a few people so uh, that was a challenge and then uh, since i didn't know uh, i had never been uh, to any of these countries i didn't know the work culture or the the basic culture over there and which college is good there and or, or, uh, how to go about doing that so that's when i started using more of linkedin to connect to people and uh, get their experiences who had done these courses in these different uh, countries and then i got a uh, i got a idea that okay i can shortlist to probably us and the uk considering these two have uh, quite some good colleges and uh, have been in the uh, have given a lot of good analytical courses previously and after doing that the next challenge was shortlisting the colleges uh, so first i decided like to see which are the reputed ones where i uh, which gives which have the highest ratings and then look at the eligibility criteria i couldn't meet a quite a lot of them uh, because of, of the stringent eligibility criteria some of them just wanted people who had who had done a who had a background in computer science and i didn't have it uh, i think it was because of the programming criteria involved in the courses so then i tried to filter out my colleges such that where i was able to fulfill my requirements and which i had the eligibility requirements and after i shortlisted them i looked at the scholarships and the fees uh, knowing that how much i was how much of a risk i was i would be able to take and uh, how much uh, loan i would be able to afford to do these uh, to do the masters so after when i finally shortlisted them uh, i then try to rate them according to the rankings and according to the reviews and after speaking to people on linkedin who had done these courses that this is my first uh, top 3 priorities these would be my mid ones and these would be my last ones in case i didn't get through any of my previous choices uh, after doing that the next part was the application process <laughs> yeah, I, it was my first time doing an application for any college admission because like for bachelor i never needed to do any or not neither for my school so i went through online looked at sops and then uh, tried to make my own sop revise it show my sop to a few other people um, i even thought of going through consultancies uh, a few times but then um, due to the costs involved i didn't see the them giving enough value and then i had my i had a few friends who had 
gone for doing the masters and they told me that they were quite keen on helping me out and there was uh, not a stringent requirement for a consultancy uh, unless i was very um, under confident or not confident so they looked at my sops and uh, my lors which were given to me by my managers and uh, from my hods in my college they went through that they told me a few suggestions i revised it and then again i showed it to a different set of people to get their opinion and going on going on the, the, um, i finally could kind of come up with a final version which uh, i had to again then trim for each college's uh, rewrite it for uh, to make it specific to each college and that after clear, clearing that step uh, i think the next part was the interviews a few colleges had interviews uh video interviews like the one we are doing now and some had pre-recorded questions some had face to face questions uh so i had to prepare for them once i was shortlisted for the interview uh i think this the the next challenge was preparing for mock interviews and things like that so that i have uh, i have i get a vague idea of what questions would be asked and what answers i need to give out to convince the college or the admissions team that i am really interested to in analytics and i have made up my mind due to my past experience and not because analytics was a booming thing at that moment <laughs> after that uh, getting through the admission then the challenges were you know applying for a loan visa speaking to the college team about what requirements what else do they need from my end uh trying for accommodation but since i told you my relatives were here so i was fortunate not to worry much about accommodation but yeah my friends had to worry about accommodation contracts opening and bank account and those were the problems once like once i landed in uk and challenges i faced but yeah if 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 you know someone who has already been through this process you know it becomes quite easy to um, get down and manage yourself uh, once you landed in the country and started in the college right now my future plan i wouldn't say i'm looking for uh, another educational stint uh, i am looking to develop my profile build up my technical skills and get get a good strong resume uh, current plan is to work in the analytics domain uh, for at least uh, uh, probably another 5 uh, 6 years definitely uh, and then try to progress to a a um, more managerial level role but sticking to the analytics domain where um, i probably get to uh, like mentor students who are um, who have joined as analysts or who have joined as uh, um, basically new graduates who are looking to make a career in the analytics domain and then manage a team probably single handedly uh, work on projects and uh, try to uh, provide more value to my employer so that's the i I haven't planned a lot but I see myself being in the analytics domain at least for the next 5 to 6 years uh, on a role which would on a on a role which would help me improve my technical skills and also probably help me gain some managerial uh, uh skills and uh, help me mentor my own teams yeah uh, so after doing the business analytics a uh, uh, wide range of varieties a wide range of jobs are uh, you, you you get an opportunity for them so uh, you, you can take uh, the big four accounting firms or the big four consultancies or you can take the major banks all these uh, have always had a requirement for analytics uh, and uh, analysts and since data is being used so much more and created and used and analyzed so much more with every passing day uh, the range of opportunities have kept opening you have healthcare you have retail domain you have uh, opportunities uh, to work with the government now uh, um who are also looking now how to use data to better improve um, their facilities um, and you have uh, you you have uh, he- in healthcare people de- trying to use data to you know have early detection of uh, diseases cancer things like that in the retail domain you have people using data um uh, to 
increase customer sales to get more customers to increase their revenue and of course you have companies uh, like amazon facebook google who are completely uh, running on data and trying to analyze and um, uh, see how how to make improve their products so i think you a lot of opportunities are open it it depends on the candidate on what he's interested in if he's interested in working on data in the finance domain then join a bank if he's work look looking to uh, work on uh, data for financial reasons he can join one of the big fours if he's looking to work on data in the retail domain he can join the consultancies the the big four the mckinsey's the bcgs if he's looking for a very good tech role it, uh, which involves a lot of programming there's always the big four uh, google facebook amazon so you have a lot of opportunities you have a lot of startups that use analytics analytics in fact analytics is i'm sure analytics is being used in these uh, in your company as well to um, match people to a good mentor with a better so matching uh, sorry aspirants and mentors and also it's being used in the uh, recruitment industry to match a profile with the correct job so you as uh, it's it's going to be a lot of new opportunities it all depends on where the student wants to see himself uh, working in in which domain uh yeah so uh i I'm, i'm sure that the aspirants right now would not be uh, very keen on thinking about masters due to the corona situation but uh, to to tell, to give you a, a more positive outlook that this situation is going to end soon colleges are still taking students are still going through applications probably the the course might become online now uh, for for a couple of months and then you shift to the when and then you shift to the full time on campus course uh but uh, just remember that um this uh, the when you're trying to do a masters it's more of an investment uh, which would give you uh, your dividends in the long term and not just after a, in one or two years because it's quite a huge investment and the the skills and the knowledge that you're going to gain is going to equip you for the next probably 10 to 15 years so think of it in that way and uh, don't take a decision that oh everyone is doing analytics uh, so i want to do analytics or everyone is doing an mba or us is the best place because i see uh, most of the people people going there no it it's not that way there are a lot of other good colleges that are coming up uh, that have the same courses on par with the courses in us universities just that um, they don't they haven't taken in uh, they haven't been there for enough years to uh, showcase that so try to make your decision by speaking to people who have gone through the course rather than just believing on reviews online uh, people who have posted a uh, uh, blog on blogs or on other websites I think having a conversation with someone who has been through the whole procedure and the experience uh, would be a better person to give you a uh, opinion on and would then make you aware that you know when you make a choice it's uh, it is your own decision and uh, you don't uh, have to later uh, regret it so uh, you don't need to later regret it that oh that uh, that blog told me and this person told me that so do your research uh, spend some time uh, first uh, shortlisting the colleges and the countries you want to be then you decide on uh, then you okay so first most important is the course and the domain and then you decide on the country then you decide on the college and then you look at the fees and then finally you look at that uh, if you are uh, comfortable like doing uh, look at the course requirements uh, the each each of the college have their own websites and have which courses they go through for for the analytics which sorry which subjects uh, they would uh, handle and they would teach you for the analytics course so go through them and then you decide uh, probably after looking at your uh, financial situation after looking at uh, how keen you are moving out of the country or you want to do a masters in india itself because in india also right now i have heard a lot of colleges have started doing the analytics courses for example one of them which i was heard was the iit iim collaboration uh, and then there's great uh, there's another great institutions uh, out there in singapore also and in ireland and canada now so since analytics is booming now everyone wants to have a piece of the cake but again don't keep that as your sole reason uh, my honest advice is talk to people you have this opportunity on platforms like foreign admits uh, to have an introductory call with a person uh, who has been through the course who has uh, who is working now or who has been through the same experience ask them their experience and then try to decide please don't just rely on uh, 
um, whatever you see on social media that oh I'm enjoying my masters in this country or that country and uh, it's analytics it's big everywhere so try to take a conscious decision after speaking to people who have been through the same and they will definitely advise you on how you can proceed further whether doing a masters is right for you or wrong or you need to rethink your approach or they can even help you with your SOPs LORs interviews and everything